Well, the day finally arrived. After a few weeks of filming, because it's been like a month or so since I first announced NAFL, it's finally time for the 2017 AAFL season highlights and recap. As yeah, remember, like I said in the announcement video, me and Amphi made this league back on January 22nd, 2017, and it wasn't announced till this last August or September. So over two and a half years of waiting. So we're all the way back in 2017 still. But anyways, here were the regular season standings at the end of the 2017 NAFL season. As we start off in Anthony's East, that's what I'm just going to call our divisions. The New York Towers won the division at 12-6, and six, followed by Boston at 10-8. and eight. Then Toronto, oh boy, what a collapse they had. They were 6-2-1 and one at one point, and then they went 9-8 and finished 9-8-1. and one. So that means they went 3-6 and six the rest of the way. St. Juan Islanders were 8-10. and 10. And then the Washington Stars, they were 0-11, I think. And then they finished 3-4. and four. So not bad finish to end the year off. Although they did terrible. They had tied a bunch of teams for the worst record in the league. And then, of course, you had the Pittsburgh Drillers. Dominant, good defense, strong offense. They went 14-4. Had the second best record in Anthony's side. Followed by the Columbus Cardinals. They got really lucky because other teams choked and let them get in. Just barely win like four, four or five games in a row to get in with a really good offense but a terrible defense. St. Louis Archers were 9-9. The Louisville Colonels were 7-11. The Green Bay Cheese, they were... Around 500 in the middle of the part of the season, but then they choked. In fact, they were the Washington Stars' first um, win. They lost to Washington to give them their first win. That's how bad they were as they finished 6-12. and 12. Then Anthony Southern Division, the New York Jesters, won the division at 13-4-1. and one. They kind of struggled near the end of the year after struggling in the beginning part. They were dominant, however, in the middle part of the season. And then, of course, the Dallas Bulls choked. They're n they finished 9-9. Same goes for the Mexico City Aztecs. Both of them had a shot to make a playoff run, but they choked after the second half of the season. The Miami Orangemen were 8-10, and, and Orlando Galaxies were 6-12. and 12. And then here is the most interesting division in Amphi's side was the Western, I mean, Western Conference, which the Oakland Oats won, the, won their division, had the best record in the league at 16-2, the second best offense in the league and the number one defense in the league. And they were undefeated for most of the season until the end. It was incredible. And then right behind them was the Phoenix Cactus. This could be a huge rivalry as they were 15-3. and free. They gave one of Oakland's two losses and they had the number one offense that year. Their defense, however, was not that good. And of course, the rest of the division was interesting with LA being 7-11 but having a very good offense, just a terrible defense. Um, Santa Clara... Had a bad offense and defense, but they actually won a whole bunch of games that they started off like 0-8 or 0-9 and stuff like that. So they had a solid finish at the end. And then the Las Vegas um, Dices had a good offense, but at the beginning part of the year, but no, nothing went right for them. They could not stop the losing as they finished 3-15. and After that, we head over to my division, starting off I mean, my conference with the Eastern Division, which was won by the Richmond Panthers who had the number two record in I mean, number two seed in the playoffs. Fine off, they start off the year 0 and free, and then they won the final 15 games. Incredible. Just barely holding on to the Montreal Saints, who were 14 free and one, and they were dominant throughout the entire division until they choked a bit near the end of the year, could not stop losing, allowing Richmond to come back and win it. That was incredible. Then Philadelphia. They struggled to begin the year. They finished 8-9-1. Buffalo never went right for them. 4-14. Four and 14, And Jacksonville never went right at 3-15. Wichita Thunder, probably the week, second weakest team in the playoffs. They went 12-6 and six and managed to win the division. Followed by Detroit. All of a sudden, near the end of the year, surge to win 9-9. Nine nine, had more points scored than allowed. Chicago, strong at the beginning of the year, but collapsed to finish 8-10. Memphis Jets went 4-14. Four and 14, And St. Louis, you know, San Antonio went 3-15. And, and then the Birmingham Blaze, out of nowhere surprisingly, was quiet at first, but then all of a sudden surged just like Richmond, and they went 15-3 and got the number one seed in the playoffs on my side. The Baltimore Knights, which were good at the beginning part of the year, struggled near the end of the year. They managed to get in just barely at 12-6, and six, as Cuba has shot to get in, but choked the final few weeks to blow it at 11-7. Atlanta was 8-10 and in Tampa was 5-13. And then the Lubbock Texans, 
this team, I think, is the best team in my division, I mean, my conference. They were like 11-0, 12-0. They were like one of the last few remaining undefeated teams in the, the league. But they choked at the end. They could not stop losing games. And not only did they no longer get undefeated, they couldn't even get a first-round bye. They went 14-4 and finished in the third seed. And then the San Diego Marine, I mean Mariners, they won like their six last games of the year, but the tiebreakers choked them because I think they were a much better team than Baltimore. They could have made some noise in the playoffs. And then, of course, Vancouver, they struggled badly at the beginning part of the year, but then they surged too, and they finished 10-8, had a win record, just couldn't make the playoffs. The Minnesota Raccoons at 8-10, and and then the Denver Rollers at 3-15, nothing went right for them. So as you see in the... In Amphi's side, the number one seed was Oakland, 16-2. Number two, Pittsburgh, 14-4. Number three, New York, I mean, um, New Orleans, 13-4-1. Number four was New York at 12-6. And, and the wildcard teams was Phoenix at 15-3 and then Columbus at 11-7. Followed by my conference, it was the Birmingham Blaze, 15-3. Then Richmond at 15-3. Then um, Lubach at 14-4. Wichita at 12-6. And... Six. Um, Montreal at 14, 3 and 1, and then Baltimore 12 and 6. Well, in the playoffs, starting off in Anthony's division, it was first Columbus visiting um, New Orleans, and New Orleans dominated over um, Columbus, had no chance whatsoever. They won, which set them up at Pittsburgh, followed by Phoenix visiting New York, and Phoenix actually had to pull off a comeback against New York, believe it or not. Even though they were a much better team, they actually got that win on the road, which set them up against their arch rival Oakland, most likely. And then New Orleans visited Pittsburgh. New Orleans stood no chances. Pittsburgh won. They made the conference championship for the first time ever. And then, of course, the arch rivalry Phoenix at Oakland. Even though both games were close, the home team won that. This time around, Oakland won in dominant fashion. Never gave Phoenix a chance whatsoever to win as they made the conference championship for the first time ever. And then the championship, Pittsburgh at Oakland. Oakland held on and got the win, barely, to make it to the championship for the first time ever. Meanwhile, in my conference, it was Baltimore visiting Lubach. Ball, I mean, Lubach won it in a tight game, which set him up at Richmond. And then Montreal visited Wichita. And which and um, Rich, I mean, um, Montreal got the win in a defensive struggle to move on to visit Birmingham. And then the um, Lubach visiting Richmond. Despite being on the road, I mean, Lubach pulled off the comeback on the last second touchdown to get the win to get to the conference championship, ending Richmond's 15-game winning streak, which was the longest in the league. And then Montreal visited Birmingham. Birmingham won it to get him in the conference championship for the first time ever. And then the conference championship for my side was Lubach at Birmingham. Lubach played hard, but they couldn't keep up with Birmingham, and they choked their chance to make it to the title game, as they should have, as Birmingham won it, and they were in the championship for the first time ever. Which then set up the 2017 NAFL Championship, which was, this is the logo by Amphony. I had to add 2017 on there, which I'm going to do every year for championship, as this game is down in Aloha Stadium in Honolulu, Hawaii, of course, with the game, the home team this year, being Amphony's conference, as it was the Oakland Oats against my Birmingham Blaze. The game was tight, hard fought, not within two, always within a score of each other. But in the end, the Oakland Oats would win it 26 to 24, and the Oakland Oats clinched their first ever NAFL championship and the first title in NAFL history. That was an incredible first season. As soon we got to get to week, I mean 2018. But now, before that happens, I had to. Um, Anthony decided to update all of his team's logos. I got them all, but I got to update them in-game. Once I update them all, I'm going to do a video showing the update logos, and then I'll begin simulating the 2018 season. So I hope you all enjoyed watching the first, um, seeing the highlights of the first season of NAFL, so, and congratulations to the Oakland Oats being, getting their first title. See you guys soon for the 2018 NAFL season.